only 500,000? Yes. They asked for 3 million. Why am I being asked to pay more? I don't know. You must know. We have the same level of car. Uh, good morning, Uganda. Good morning, taxpayers. Uh, this is Saleh Kamba, and I'm glad to be back with the webinar on, on tax investigation matters. And uh, today, specifically, we are going to discuss uh, issues concerning the rights and obligations of a taxpayer who is particularly under investigation. Of course, so often they are, we have seen so many questions on social media, especially Twitter and Facebook, where people have been asking so many questions that, uh, that, uh, that uh, what happens uh, to, to, to a taxpayer once he's, he's, uh, he's placed under investigation. Of course, they have had rumors, actually we shall call them rumors or rather allegations that, um, that are so many times these taxpayers are harassed. Of course, we believe from the reports that uh, we do receive is that uh, it's because most, most likely is that uh, taxpayers do not understand their rights and obligations. So today in-house, I have a very wonderful lady. She's going to introduce herself and she'll tell us more about uh, what, any other details that uh, we wish to know. Yes, please. Uh, Good morning, Uganda. My name is Donna Ayebale Sechitoleko. Okay. I work with the Tax Investigations Department of URA. Okay. And I'm here to shed light on the rights and obligations of um, a taxpayer, specifically who's under investigations, mm -hmm. so that we can make it clear mm -hmm. and uh, make it uh, possible for us to do our work um, in a harmonized way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you heard it from, from the lady, a very beautiful lady there she is. And uh, of course, she's, she's an expert in, 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 in specific areas. Of course, just like she has said, we are here to shed more light on, uh, on matters concerning rights and obligations of a taxpayer. Of course, we've seen them, uh, of course, we have, uh, as URA, we, we know there are those specific rights and obligations that are commonly known, that you have, a, you have an obligation to get a teen, you have an obligation to register your business, that is uh, to formalize your business. And the other one, of course, you have an obligation to, to file your tax returns and also to pay. But what are your rights? You get it? Eh? So here we're going to shed more light. Of course, those are some of the basics, some of the things that we normally uh, educate taxpayers about. So we're going to start uh, with, well, of course, there's now the main question. There are always two main questions here to people, people normally ask about. When, when you talk about rights and obligations of taxpayer, what, is, what do you mean by rights, taxpayer rights and obligations? What, what is the definition of, of rights and obligations? Yes. Yeah, so rights are basically mm. entitlements an okay. individual has mm. or a group of individuals, mm. and these are enshrined in various laws. Okay. For example, our constitution, the mm. 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, okay. it highlights what the rights of... Um, every individual are okay but as well mm. a person who has rights has obligations okay so mm. obligations are responsibilities mm. which you 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 have to 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 ensure that you perform mm. okay. towards mm. enjoying your rights okay yes so it's always a, a give and take so are the obligations also in the constitution or we only have rights in the constitution so we have rights but uh in the constitution okay. and obligations they, they they come out of whatever uh, area like in the we culture are hand, norms yes, uh, well, reason yes. and all that okay so for example mm. when we bring it home to to mm. ura mm. and specifically to tax investigations okay. when we are carrying out an investigation mm. we have duties to the taxpayer okay. and they also have obligations mm. towards mm. making sure that mm. at the end of the day mm. we have an effective investigation okay mm. so what are some of those rights uh, briefly what are some of those rights normally normally uh, uh, taxpayers are supposed to know about especially someone who is under investigation yes mm. what are some of those rights so for 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 a start yes, yes, yes. you have a right to be treated fairly okay that as we review mm -hmm. your your transactions and we review um, your taxation matters in, mm. in line with the, the, the provisions of the law, okay. you, you have a right to fair treatment. Okay. You should never be put in a position where you feel witch hunted. Mm -hmm. No, we should investigate based on facts. On facts, eh? yes. Not, not feelings and not emotions. Not feelings mm. and not uh, hearsay. Okay. So we always go 
an extra mind, mm. to, um, an extra mile to ensure okay. that whatever decision we have made is made out of fairness so, and fairness. objectivity. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's good. Mm. Then uh, the other one, uh, I, I, I know might say around, around uh, something to do with the right, the right to privacy. Mm. Now that we are discussing investigation, mm. and now since we are talking about investigation, and then the other side, a taxpayer has a right to privacy. Don't you think as investigators you're infringing on the rights to the right to privacy? Well, we only uh, invade your privacy, mm. privacy mm. to the extent that mm. it is um, causing government to lose revenue. Okay. So we will not come to your premises or uh, get data that is not related to tax administration. Mm. So the privacy will only be infringed to the extent that we are getting things that information are that mm. will help us to administer the tax law. So it's not things like your DNA and all that? No. Like that. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, that's yeah. good. I mean, you should have comfort as taxpayers mm. to know that URA is not going to, to look for your personal information. Yeah, we are concerned with the transactions yeah. and how they affect revenue administration. Is it similar to confidentiality? Well, confidentiality mm. is it, it can be tweaked in a way that when we get your information mm. during the course of uh, our tax investigation, okay. you, you, you have a right to confidentiality. Mm. I will not share it mm. with other people who mm. are not part of the part investigation. Of the investigation. Mm. And if we must share it, it will be on a need-to-know basis. Need-to-know. Yes. So meaning that uh, any other third party should, do, uh, should only specify what area the person What want. area mm. they want. Okay. If they must receive information. Because we have all these um, inter-agency mm. uh, corporations. Right. Okay. But we will not share information mm. if it's not... Related mandatory to. or request re required okay so your information as taxpayers mm. is confidential yeah, yeah okay yes uh, uh uh dear viewers uh it is really going to be an exciting discussion and we believe so that uh we might have i think even part one and part one part three because mm. we know uh, there are so many questions that will come through yeah. uh, of course we are continuing with the discussion is continuing on uh, the rights and obligations and of course she has mentioned that the right to confidentiality and privacy whereby of course your information will be kept uh, confidential no any other third party will be will, be, will, will, will know about the, about what is being investigated unless Unless uh, she has talked about the intelligence cooperation and something, unless that information is needed for any other further investigation related, related to the same matter. Yes. Uh, now, normally uh, we, we've seen people being uh, being uh, arrested. Uh, we see property being uh, okay, um, uh, especially under customs. We see some of their some of the goods being confiscated, placed under uh, I don't know whatever whatever word they use. But when do you, when do you, at what point do you put those cuffs on their hands? Do you, is the taxpayer informed in time that you are coming to arrest you or this is going to happen? Because normally there is a right to be, to, to inform, okay, they are right to be informed. I want you to throw some, uh, some light around it because I know I've, we've seen instances in the newspapers where, where they say that uh, this one and this one is being investigated or and someone runs out and goes into hiding. Mm -hmm. And then others come and present themselves mm -hmm. to, to police. Mm -hmm. I want you to throw some la more light on uh, the right to be informed. What do they mean mm -hmm. as a right to be, uh, to, to be informed to a taxpayer? What is okay. the meaning? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the right to be informed, and mm -hmm. thank you for highlighting that, mm -hmm. we are supposed at any time mm -hmm. to inform the taxpayer mm -hmm. of why we are um, pursuing a certain direction mm. and uh, usually it will be through a formal letter okay. you know so, yeah. such that we can avoid um, people who are masquerading okay. as taxpayer as a tax, tax investigators, revenue uh, officers. investigators okay. from you know disrupting the the businesses of the taxpayers so for example when we are doing our investigations when mm. we receive information from mm. whatever sources we receive it from mm. Mm. we will First of all, invite you such that we can tell you that we have an in ongoing investigation okay. concerning your company or your business mm. and we'll tell you the reasons why mm. 
we felt the need to look into your tax, tax matters. matters. It's okay. really just to review. We are not saying you're guilty at that point. Mm. So we will inform you that we are looking into your tax matters, maybe for a specific period, mm. and then we'll ask you to come in and support us okay. and actually, in essence, support yourself mm. to, to make sure that, again, at the end of the day, mm. whatever conclusion we will have yeah. will be based on facts and okay. fairness. Whereby you're also part of the investigation itself. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, it's a, a, it's, a, it's a journey where we want to hear from you Okay. To, to tell us why we are seeing what we are seeing, mm. maybe in, in the system based on your transactions, okay. and then where you can explain to us, we, we will update whatever um, information we need to update. Okay. And uh, usually, um, after we've given you that information, we give you time to respond. Okay. We don't give you information and uh, and we keep quiet. We keep quiet. Okay. No, we will keep in touch with you. Mm. Um, through email communications, through mm. the formal letters, uh, through phone calls, mm -hmm. to ensure that... Even WhatsApps? Um, <laughs> it's a, it depends on... It's a case by case. case, by case. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we want to, to, to ensure is that at any time we have used all avenues yeah, to do. make sure that your right to be informed is not infringed on. Oh, okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, n n uh, nice. Now, oh, you talked about time to respond. Now that your taxpayer has been uh, communicated to, has been informed about an ongoing investigation, and of course you presented yourself, just like you explained. Now, specifically, I know now, I don't know whether it is an entitlement or a responsibility, but uh, so, uh, for how long, let's say an, an ongoing investigation, uh, maybe you, you approached me last week on Wednesday, so how, for, uh, after how long should I expect a response from, from your team, from your team, yes? Okay, so we have service level agreements okay. mm. which stipulate timelines, first mm. of all, within which an investigation should mm. be concluded, concluded. Okay. and timelines within which we should um, communicate to a taxpayer mm. after receipt of information okay. from them mm. or um, after inviting them mm. to come in for a meeting okay. and usually um, we want to work within five days. Oh, five working okay? days. Eh? In terms of if we want you to respond, mm. we we'll request you to respond within five days but we are not very rigid. Mm. In the event that you're unable to, we can always extend mm. okay. at, your at your request. You know, because what's important for us uh, as URA is to make sure that we keep the communication lines okay. open. open because what we want is to support you mm. to comply. Oh, perfect. We want to support you to be tax compliant. Mm -hmm. So when you communicate with us within the specific timelines, we're mm. able to manage turnaround times because an investigation um, should be concluded within reasonable time. Which is favorable on both sides. Which is favorable on both times. So. Mm. The, the extent to which the taxpayer will cooperate mm -hmm. will determine how fast we resolve the yeah. issues. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, so, so, so meaning that uh, 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 there's no excuse of, uh, of saying that, uh, of saying that, uh, of course, I know, I know we've, we've had uh, in the papers, especially us journalists, we've seen in the papers that uh, an investigation started 10 years ago to see ongoing We've seen investigations that are uh, even for, go for 20 years, maybe on the criminal side, uh, other or political. What? So I do. Uh, so I don't. I didn't. I wasn't sure. We were. We we're not sure about uh, how long. Eh? Mm -hmm. But thank you for th uh, throwing some more light on that. Now, uh, so often we 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 see we see people say that uh, say that uh, uh, you are a. Okay, the investigators are tough. They say that. We. I think. Uh, the investigators are tough, so 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 I wanted you to 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 to, to like of course they are asking like what plans do you have in mind like as as investigators to engage some of these taxpayers for them to get to know are there any communication plans tax education plans that you guys have planned any communication strategy because you know you know most of the time why people complain is because they do not understand these things. I want to give you, like, uh, what is the future? What are some of the future plans that you have in mind to, to let taxpayers understand their rights and obligations? Communication. 
Okay. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, first of all, mm. even during um, the engagements we have, mm. uh, when an investigation is ongoing, mm. it's one of the avenues that we use to okay. tell the taxpayers what mm. their rights and obligations are. Mm. But uh, um, we, we have a lot of um, visibility mm -hmm. on social media platforms and um, we are trying our best to make sure that people know their rights okay. as well as their obligations because the two work hand in hand. Mm. Yes. So, so meaning this webinar is one of them, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. The, this webinar is aimed mm. at making people confident mm. that we respect both their rights mm. and also look to them to fulfill their obligations. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now, someone here is asking uh, the right to representation. Who, like, uh, of course, of course, back in the back line with the awareness eh, of the rights and obligation. And just like I said before, that where taxpayers complain that most times you are uh, you are investigators are tough. Does it mean that because uh, for here he, he uh, the the person asking assumes that we are the judge, the jury, and what prosecutor is it? Mm. So so I think it's in line with the representation. Can a taxpayer be represented in case of an ongoing investigation? Now, especially now that you, when you call them for for those meetings, can you come with a lawyer or mm. yes? Yes, um, a taxpayer, mm. of course, has the obligation to mm. explain their tax affairs. Okay. But by themselves, by themselves, okay. it's their duty. Okay. For example, if you are um, you have a company as a director, mm. you have the duty to explain why certain things are are, are being done a certain way. Okay. However, because um, we have uh, lawyers and accountants who mm -hmm. come into play mm -hmm. to support these companies or these taxpayers, mm -hmm. sometimes they come in to to support the investigations okay. by, you know, uh, helping the taxpayers to understand maybe the provisions of the law or how accounting principles work. But at the end of the day, it's important for the director to know that they are accountable okay whereas they can be represented by and it it, it has to be formal. formal you have to formally appoint those people okay. and let us know that they're acting on your behalf okay whenever they come in mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you are the one who's going to be held accountable because this is your you mean, you, your you, you mean the business owner eh? yes then at what point normally i say around eh? at what point do they say that uh, for, for any tax crime committed, the crime shall be put on the head of the accountant? Because I've seen that somewhere. At what point does that principle come in? That is where the accountant mm. acted outside the mandate mm. given to them by the company owner. Okay. But it has to be clearly Step. demonstrated mm. that whereas I maybe availed this documentation for mm. the accountant to file my returns mm. they used other documentation okay okay mm. so but at every point mm. until you bring the accountant to the scene of the crime mm. you're accountable hey, okay. as a director okay yeah so it's important that we don't delegate mm. too much yeah. we need to keep <laughs> interested in, the, in how our tax affairs okay. are being now, managed. Now, you, uh, this is now a very interesting one. You, it, it brings in a very valid uh, discussion now. What are some of those indicators that would really invite uh, the, you, the tax investigators, to come and look into the matters of maybe Trevor or me? What are some of those basic indicators of fraud that you'd look into? Mm. Briefly, briefly mention. Without really going into details, okay. because the kind mm -hmm. of work we do, of course, is quite okay. sensitive. Mm -hmm. But um, there are those very broad ones, like if you're expected to issue an FRIS invoice mm. and you don't. Okay. If you're expected to file a return mm. and you don't. Mm. If you're expected to update your A with your, maybe your details have changed mm. and you don't update us. It's a crime. I mean, it's a crime mm -hmm. because the law request requires you to do that. Mm -hmm. And for us, we, we, we will assume that you omitted to do that with the intent okay. to, to, to maybe... To reduce my liability. Uh, uh, for us not to know, mm -hmm. 
and so there are several ingredients okay. of those uh, 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 different of uh, we call them possible offenses, possible. which we we must all we must prove all of them, mm. and beyond reasonable doubt for us to you know uh, come in and say we are investigating yeah, possible yeah. tax fraud. Possible tax fraud. Mm. Okay, uh, dear viewers, like we said, uh, these are some of the things that we normally do, and. Uh, and, 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 and we really oh, just oversee them because we think ah, we, know, so long to know. we think these are small matters. But you see, just like she has said, uh, even the failure to update your RA about uh, the changes in your, in your uh, registration details is also a crime. Mm. So let's say uh, your business, I will give an example here, I believe. Uh, let's say I have a business in Chireka. And I so happen to maybe this, my business has now grown and uh, I want to shift maybe to Mokono. But in, the, in my registration details, I still show that I'm still in Chireka. And yet, in the actual sense, I'm in Mukono. But all that, I have to, I have to inform. I have to inform your RA. So now, that's, uh, that, that now brings me to the question of, uh, now, in the, in, in, the, in the event that I've shifted, maybe from Chireka to Mukono, do I inform the Chireka team that um, guys have moved to Mukono, or I have to inform the Mukono team? In that incident, whom do I inform? In terms to your eye. Do I inform the regional, I mean the area where I've shifted to, that I've come in your area now? Um, like in terms of amending the details. Mm. Now, URA is committed to making it easy okay. for the taxpayers nice. to, mm. to, to meet their obligations. Okay. Mm. So you can actually apply for TIN amendment, TIN amendment. online. Okay. And nice. mm -hmm. it, what you want to specifically amend mm -hmm. is your address yeah, physical address. address the registered address mm. so you may not need to go to your tax office whereas yes. you could mm. to get support wow yes interesting brilliant uh of course your area has simplified the processes everything is almost i think 90 percent is now online apart from a few where where you have to to be physically present for example i uh, you know when you when you're amending your your for example when it comes to amending your team when you're meaning, for example, the, the email address, okay, those contact details, you have to be physically present, right? But the rest has to be, especially when you have, a, when you have a access to your team, you can do the rest online. But if you don't, you always have to come and show your face uh, physically. Yes, uh, now bring, this brings us to, to the last part of the discussion and uh, where I want now, which is now the gist. Uh, the gist of the discussion, the background, or the backbone of discussion, the obligations. I know taxpayers have their entitlements, but what are their responsibilities, especially on investigation? We have come, let's say tax investigation team has come to my premises. What are some of the obligations? What are some of my obligations to, to, to the tax investigation team? Uh, they can, let's say they have come to, 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 to maybe to, they are, request, they are requesting for details. I don't know my accounting books. What are, what are some of the things a taxpayer should be aware of that when the team comes, these are the things I must comply. This is my responsibility to the state. I want, okay, all the way to the government when tax investigation team comes. What are my obligations now? So the major ones. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, of course, there's this. Um, we need to highlight that there's a difference between audit and investigation. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. So, in an audit, mm. URA will write to you mm. and tell you that we are going to be um, coming to do an audit and prepare these documents for us. Okay. And uh, then the URA team will come to the premises and mm. you have prepared prior. Okay. But with an investigation, we are really responding to intelligence perhaps mm -hmm. and uh, when we get to your promise premises first of all what you need to know is that we are we are within the law coming to your premises to do for example a search and seizure operation mm -hmm. is within the law section 41 and 42 of the tax procedures code act nice. yeah. mm -hmm. so when we come in what we expect is for you to first of all mm -hmm. cooperate with us mm -hmm. because usually the team will have an introduction letter, mm. which is signed by an authorized person. In this case, which one? Uh, 
the authorized person? It would be the commissioner. Tax the commissioner tax investigations. Okay. okay. And the, the introduction letter will have the list of URA staff who are going to carry out the yes. search and seizure operation. Okay. So your responsibility as a taxpayer in that case is mm. not to be alarmed mm. because usually we'll get information and it could be accurate intelligence or okay. it might not be accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need you to cooperate. Mm. Um, usually um, we are required mm. to, I mean, out of prudence, mm. a, such, a such order. Such order? A, might be availed okay. but without it we still have mandate uh, the the law still gives us powers to enter uh, your wait, premises wait, when you say might be availed now what if you find someone a rowdy taxpayer you can't tanker as one and you don't have would you really enter the premises like i said mm. prudence, prudence okay, would okay. require that we we, you come we, with we it. issue us a, a such order okay. but the law still gives, gives you us the, power. the powers mm. to come into your premises okay, okay. and uh once we are there, we will request you to allow us to, you know, search any of the areas that we Indeed. suspect might have tax information that help us to do our tax review. Mm. Um, the other cooperation that we'll need is for you to, before we take anything from your premises, is okay. for you to verify that what we have taken mm. is actually accurate because we... We highlight them in a document mm -hmm. that is called an exhibit slip, such that at all times we have the same records of whatever we've picked from your premises. So your responsibility is to, first of all, verify and that whatever we have said is going to be taken is actually what we are planning mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. Then you have a representative as the business owner or an appointed uh, representative mm -hmm. to sign that exhibit form. Okay. And... Uh, then going forward, cooperate when we call you in Go to in. now begin to have a discussion. Hey. Mm. So, so, so uh, cooperation meaning that uh, that's when you have a reconciliation meeting and all that. Yes. And all that. Mm. Okay. Uh, how about the interpreter? Because uh, now in the case that we have a Chinese or an Indian, do you have a team that is someone can speak Indian? <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Mm. Again, like I, I highlighted earlier, mm. we are committed to make sure that it's fair. Okay. So if I've, uh, we pick documents that are, are not in English mm. or in a language that, uh, I, I mean a generally accepted language, mm. you have a right to, to, to get an interpreter mm. and uh, usually we outsource. Yeah, okay. uh, we outsource from uh, Institute of Languages, okay. Makere University, mm. but it will be at the taxpayer's cost. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you. Uh, viewers, thank you, taxpayers. Now, the last one now, <laughs> I sort of said this uh, last one so many times, but this one now, I think is one of the, now that we're coming to the, final, to the end of the financial year, we, we, we've seen, uh, okay, in some of the WhatsApp groups where I belong to be a member, I so happen to be a member, I've seen uh, some, some of my colleagues, some of my friends uh, talking about agents' notices and everywhere everyone is talking almost about agents' notices, tax notices or whatever. Now, there's one who said that uh, he received an, an agent's notice of uh, two million. Of course, it's a small business, but of course, I think he's not been, he has not been compliant for some time we are regarding VAT. And, and yet, he's demanding URA around 7 million in terms of withholding tax. Mm. Now, how, how is such a, such a situation treated when it comes to treatment of agent notices? You as an investigator, okay, if, you have, if, you, if, if at all you have the knowledge about it, please, if you can explain to the taxpayers, how do you treat such a situation? You are in Jibanja, may enter the call agent notice. Yes. Um, agency notices mm. are actually enforced. Okay. by the debt collection unit okay. Okay, and, and uh, the domestic taxes. Okay. Okay. However, um, when you have, first of all, applying for your refund is mm. also one of your obligations mm. as a taxpayer. So in that case, um, where you, you are aware that you, you, you are owes you money mm. for whatever reason, you can apply okay. for a refund. For a refund okay? yeah. mm. But um, for for, for agency notice, I know that they can only be lifted where mm. URA has recovered mm. money mm. 
in in the event that maybe the bank has not credited URA's account, okay, uh, based on that agency notice. Okay. So my guidance would be that when you are issued an agency notice, because they give you time within which, okay, to clear your liability okay. before the agency notice can be mm. uh, enforced. Mm. So my gu guidance would be that either you you come in and request to 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 pay okay. the liability. Okay where you can pay or there are other avenues for example you can ask to pay in installments mm. uh depending on the the the, the 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 value of your liability okay, okay. so i i'm not an authority mm. but i i know that there are options whenever a taxpayer has been issued an agency notice mm. for it to be lifted okay but where you're sure that you owe you are owes you money you can apply for a, a refund, refund eh? yes all right. Uh, uh, of course, uh, as we ca as now we end, of course, in the next few in the next few minutes, we shall be ending our discussion. What is the what is your last word? What is your word to the taxpayer as we end the financial? Year? We normally call it uh, a katalikeka when whenever the show is coming to an end. What is your word of advice to the taxpayer? Of course, we shall have part two of of this webinar because I know the rights are so many. Mm -hmm. And taxpayers out there have so many complaints, so many. Mm. So what is your word of advice to the taxpayers as we end the financial year? Mm. Mm. My parting shot, parting shot is mm. um, that as taxpayers, mm. you need to know that URA is your partner. We are not here to, um, to kill businesses. Mm. We are here to support you to mm. fulfill your tax obligations mm. and which is one of the ways in which businesses can grow okay okay mm. and um, also to remind you that as ura we are just uh, on a journey to deliver our country from economic dependence so mm. to just urge you to um, fulfill your tax obligations and come in and ask for support wherever you you feel that you need support mm. and we just guarantee you that uh, we shall do the best that we can to make sure that we fulfill our vision and mission and the mandate, especially of the tax investigations department. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Donna. You've heard uh, from the lady herself, the brilliant one. Of course, we shall have part two of this very webinar. Of course, the date will be communicated because we, as we know that so many questions are coming through. But uh, of course, we cannot discuss everything in just a few minutes because I believe uh, uh, tax matters are things that are uh, that that you don't learn in one day. They are things you have to be you have to discuss. You can even take your whole year discussing matters. So uh, as we come as we end our show, we want to thank you for those who have tuned in, for those who have sp uh, spared their time of of their busy schedule to listen and watch us. Those who have bought their data, their their internet data, and and decided to follow this show. We want to thank you so much, and uh, just like uh, Donna has said, mm. for those who are who have their who have obligation to fulfill and pay their taxes, please do so on time as we end uh, as we end the financial year. If you have any liabilities, please pay. And of course, just like the, she said, she's from the tax investigation department. Please do not invite her, or do not invite her and and the team to come and look into your matters. As we end the show, we want to say thank you so much. Adiós.